Warning nitric acid perchloric acid are corrosive, and oxidizing latter being crazily so. Ammonium perchlorate is oxidizing, hydrochloric acid is corrosive, the side products chlorine is toxic, and nitrous is oxidizing. Do not try it at all. Welcome back, Matter Manipulator. So today we'll be making some perchloric acid. So now I'm going to follow this prep chem procedure with a few little of my modifications because it's not going to work in the conditions I'm doing this in. I'll link this in the description. So now the issue with this reaction is that it forms chlorine gas. And also we have to boil the perchloric acid. Perchloric acid vapor cannot be handled in a regular fume hood. Or mine, which is made of wood, which is even worse. Because it'll set it on fire and cause it to explode. So let's figure out how much chlorine this will form to see if I can do this in my yard or and or not. Because if I cannot do this in my yard, I'll have to do a, a little bit of trickery with the apparatus. So now, first things first, we figure out how much chlorine we get per mole of ammonium perchlorate. This can be done by dividing the amount of chlorine by the moles of um, perchlorate used in the reaction. So this gives us like that much. So now we take our uh, moles of chlorine per mole of ammonium perchlorate, multiply it by the moles of ammonium perchlorate in 50 grams of ammonium perchlorate, which is what we're using, and we get approximately 0.5 moles of chlorine gas. Now using the molar volume of chlorine, we know that we'll get 1.12 liters of chlorine. That's yeah, that's a lot, actually. It's like uh, a fourth of a gallon, which I guess doesn't seem like much, but it is. Now I take that and divide it by the approximate volume of my yard, and then multiply it by 100, we'll get a percentage of chlorine, which comes out to be 0.0045778, which seems pretty low, but if we turn that into parts per million, which is how we measure gases in um, an area, we just multiply percentage by um, 10,000, we'll get the ppm of 45.778 parts per million. That is a little bit more than 9 times recommended limit, which is 0.5%, and uh, that's surprising. So now let's take a look at some um, safety data. 1 to 3 parts per million is irritating, above 15 parts per million causes pulmonary symptoms, i.e. coughing and lung damage and wheezing and yeah. Not good, and 430 parts per million above is fatal in 30 minutes, so it's, well, it's not instantly fatal, it's gonna cause a lot of, um, coughing and wheezing and irritation, which I don't want that, uh, I've had my fair share of chlorine exposure, and it is not fun, so, yeah. Now, let's look at some pre-existing, um, videos, aka literature review time. So, literature review time. By literature, I mean other YouTube videos. We're not going into the actual literature. It was science. So the first one is... This is pretty much the first one. Laboratory of Liptikov. Um, he just does the prep chem one, but scaled down. And in a beaker, he boils chlorine gas and perchloric acid into his lab. That's exactly what I'm trying to not do. So we cannot use his method. So now let's take a look at the second one. So the second one is by Lead Azide. He uses ammonium perchlorate and hydrochloric acid and boils the ammonia out of it. Issue with this is you have hydrochloric acid and ammonium perchloric contamination in your acid. So I'm not going to be doing it this way because I want mine to be as pure as I can get it. I'm not going to use this for much, to be honest, other than uh, some reactions, not analytical work. So I don't need it super pure, but eh, it's best to try purifying stuff when you can. Now lastly, we have our chemistry's video, where he reacts sodium perchlorate with hydrochloric acid and then filters off the sodium chloride. Now the obvious issue with this is sodium contamination and also some a little bit of hydrochloric acid left, but the sodium is the main issue. Now this is because it's perchloric acid forms a 72% azeotrope with water, so there will still be some water with the sodium chloride dissolved. So what can we do to eliminate these problems? A simple method that we can still use in this reaction because it's a very clean reaction. It makes nothing else other than perchloric acid, and chlorine, nitrous oxide, and water. And now the chlorine and all that stuff can be boiled off. Although I did find a tiny bit of chlorine like staying dissolved, so that's a minor issue, but that's fine. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a distillation apparatus. So yeah. First, add 50 grams of ammonium chloride to a 250 milliliter round bottom flask. 
one neck is fine, although you need a clay's adapter, or, uh, well, actually, two necks, uh, the best, because then you can stick a thermometer in as well, but I'm in a weird position where I only have a four-neck flask, <laughs> so, yeah. Now, to the ammonium perchlorate, add in 60 milliliters of water, start, but it's not gonna completely dissolve, so don't, it doesn't matter. Next, add 40 milliliters of azeotropic nitric acid, so around 65 to 70%. No reaction is observed. Set it for distillation with an addition funnel, and also place a sodium hydroxide trap on the end of the apparatus. Now add a mixture of 50 milliliters of concentrated 32% hydrochloric acid with 25 milliliters of water into addition funnel. Heat up the ammonium perchlorate nitric acid mixture, and then we're going to add a tiny bit of hydrochloric acid to get going. And now we are going to add a slow addition rate. Now you can see an orange color in my flask, that's due to the nitrogen dioxide contamination in my nitric acid because I just dilute it from fuming nitric acid and I don't bother cooling it because I'm lazy and nitrogen dioxide is usually not much of an issue. So every now and again add a bit of hydrochloric acid a drip rate of approximately one drip per five seconds is good and the bubbling mostly will be nitrous oxide with a little bit of chlorine of course so that's why you have the trap to destroy any chlorine using this apparatus you could theoretically do this reaction without a fume hood i don't recommend it but you could yeah so Nitrous oxide, it's an oxidizer, so we can see that it actually is being formed and our reaction is working by sticking a burning thing on the end of the tubing while being careful not to set the tube on fire, so yeah. Anyways, after that, after all the hydrochloric acid has been added, we're going to add a thermometer to the flask and heat it to drive the water off. The prep chem procedure says that you can heat it up to three, uh, 135 to 140 Celsius to boil off all the water, but I found it was not sufficient to be even close to 70%. It was rather like 50-60%. So I set up an air condenser and a sand bath in with all the acid in a 50 milliliter round bottom flask, and in a sand bath because a 50 mil flask in a 1 liter mantle is just stupid. I distilled it so that um, eventually the boiling point actually plateaued and started dropping because I could not provide enough temperature to boil the perchloric acid itself. But this should drive pretty much all the water off. And our liquid and boiling flask was then placed into my refrigerator after it cooled down to room temperature to bring it down to around 0 to 5 Celsius to, pre to precipitate any leftover ammonium perchlorate, which next day negligible amounts of crystal, um, crystals formed, so I didn't care, and I just took density of it already. And now, well, yes, I took it while it was cold, the density is thrown off a bit, it's fine, I don't really need too good of an accuracy, I just need it to be concentrated enough. Density was near 70%, from guess I would say 68 to not, um, 69%, by taking the density that I had and dividing it by the actual density, then multiplying it by 70%, so we get 68 to 69% acid, which is not bad. Now let's do the fun part, let's burn stuff. Insert maniacal laughter and bracket period. Engage zoom and enhance. Engage enhance. Engage goggles. Engage face shield. First up, paper. Yeah, it's violent. Next, more paper. Yeah, also violent. Even more paper. Yeah, it's boring. Even, even more paper same thing happens I know next you won't guess what it is even more wrong cinnamon powder soaked in heptane because cinnamon powder is not very good at burning But after adding the perchloric acid, you can see cinnamon powder makes such a good fuel. Who knew that perchloric acid? X D D D D D D D. Next up, onion peels. They're oddly fire retardant, actually. Anyways, heptane go burr. 
Now it's on fire. And fact, onion peels are oddly explosive like Pop Rocks for whatever reason. I actually have no idea. I would assume it's trapped water in the membrane thing. So it pops like popcorn. Next up, we have methanol-soaked paper, because pure methanol it could form methyl perchlorate, which is uh, crazy explosive, so I'm, uh, yeah, um, I don't know how the paper is going to protect me, but might as well do it on paper. Now, this is sort of boring, because methanol actually burns due to the vapors, not liquid. All flammable liquids are like this. They don't burn because they themselves burn, they burn because the vapor does. Same thing with flammable powders. Powder most of the time, um, except for a few cases, for example, um, wood or paper, but it's not burning itself. It's The heat causes gas from the uh, wood breakdown to burn, which then heats up more wood, but yeah. I also then tried liquid butane, and it was boring like I expected because the vapors burn. Now, if I vaporize the perchloric acid, it would probably work, but that would probably explode. Next up, 37% hydrazine solution. And um, this was also boring. It didn't actually do much. I thought it would be hydrocolic, but no, it just made hydrazine perchlorate, which is horrifying. So let's just say I did not let that sit around for any time. And now aniline was similarly boring. Only aniline perchlorate formed and it slowly decomposed into tar. And uh, yeah, that was boring as well. And finally, magnesium. It just made a cloud of magnesium perchlorate and hydrogen gas, which was probably stupid because my fume hood has a metal perchlorate in it. Um, I probably should not have done that. And finally, water damage pH paper booklet. I have like 50 more of those, so it's fine. <laughs> Anyways, I only used around 30 milliliters of perchloric acid, which yeah, this stuff is insanely powerful by the <laughs> of viciousness it burned. So, um, yeah, this stuff is not something to mess around with. Uh, don't boil for core gas in your flammable materials, because it might spontaneously explode into a jet fuel. But anyway, yeah, that's it for this video. And this was insanely fun because of the massive amounts of fire. Uh, yes, I am a pyromaniac ever since I was seven. I had like a metal box thing outside in the yard and I just threw random things inside and burned it. Um, that's how I know what phosgene and also HCl smells like. Phosgene is formed when you burn PVC and it doesn't completely burn, so uh, yeah. Uh, don't, don't burn stuff, okay? Don't burn random stuff. I, I have a fume hood, um, although it's made of wood, but... It's like fire retardant, so yeah, that's it for this video. See so the next one where um, hopefully I'll be doing something. I don't actually know what I'm doing because I didn't write in my script right here. And yes, this is the first video I've used with a script. I followed it loosely, but um, it's probably an improvement, right? I don't know. Tell me in the comments. Do you want it to be more scripted like this video or not scripted at all? Um, scripted stuff, I like it a bit more because it's more coherent than me just rambling. So yeah. Um, speaking of that, I'm rambling, so let's end the video. Post-production, cut right now. Okay, did you do it? Hopefully I did remember to cut this out. This is awkward. Man, fuck them kids, bro. I love what I can see. What's expected? Thank you.